Welcome, everybody. You just entered into the winning zone. Winning zone. Today, I will be taught the word of God. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I am ready to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the word of God. will never be the same in Jesus name. Amen. You just entered into the winning zone. Winning zone. Winning zone.
all for you. Our hands are clapping. It's all for you. It's all for you. It's all for you. Hear our singing. It's all for you. Receive our dancing. It's all for you. We clap our hands because it's all for you. It's all for you.
Thank you for being with us today. We are excited about the Word of God and we're excited that you are viewing with us. Stay tuned for a powerful word, apply it to your life, and I know that God watches over His Word to perform it. We'll see you in a little bit. I've got a good word for 2018 already, and I'm not going to give it to you today. Amen. Y'all can be seated. Praise God. If you're watching online, welcome. Um, I want to encourage you, if you're watching this on Facebook or those of you that are here on Facebook, push it out to somebody. And uh, it's very easy to do. Just click that share button and you can minister to somebody right where you are. Just uh, we can use social media to our advantage. All things were made by him and for him. Amen? Amen. So right where you are, you can share. Welcome everybody who's joining us from the Indianapolis campus and wherever you're watching from. And again, just go ahead and shoot this out to somebody. Praise the Lord. Um, give us a little bit more light in the house. Thank you. Praise the Lord. We're going to talk some more about letting go. We talked about this a couple weeks ago, but I'm not finished. I still got some more left. Living a let go life. Giving your, it's all about giving your worries, your cares, your anxieties to the Lord. For he cares for us. Amen? And so if you know, know somebody who needs this, share it with them. Uh, so we're online. We're on our online platform. Many of you are on Facebook, and that's a very most popular social media platform. So you can share this with somebody and be a blessing to them. We're going to look at Matthew chapter 6. And let me say this first, that God knows that we have things that concern us daily. We have things that we can be stressed out about, we can, we can worry about, but God doesn't want us to give in and worry about anything or have any anxieties about anything or have any stress about anything. However, we live in a real world. And sometimes these worries slip in, sometimes these anxieties slip in, but I want you to know what to do when that happens and get to the place where you don't let them in and live a carefree, stress-free, worry-free life where you, you let your cares go because God is able to handle them. And, and some people will misunderstand this and think you're being irresponsible when you're not worrying. But worrying does not solve anything. No, giving your cares, your anxieties, worries, troubles, giving them to the Lord is the most responsible thing you can do because he's able to handle them. So that's what we're talking about when I'm talking about letting go. Everybody say, letting go. All right, so uh, we're jumping into something that Jesus taught in what's commonly referred to uh, as the Sermon on the Mount. And uh, actually in Israel, where he taught from, it still exists today. It's called the Mount of Beatitudes, okay? And uh, near the top of that mountain, uh, I look forward to, I've never been to Israel, I look forward to going there, but I'm told that down there's a large plantation at the bottom of that mountain, and, you, and, and that's where all the multitudes were that Jesus taught. Near the top of that mountain is a large rock. You can look at Matthew chapter 5 and verse 1, and it tells us that he, uh, you could, um, could you lower the monitor down just, just a bit, Okay. Um, Matthew 5.1 talks about, just a little bit more. Matthew 5.1 says that Jesus sat down and taught. He sat down. There's a large rock near the top of that mountain, and uh, it's still there today. And that could have been, we don't know, but it could have been the place where Jesus taught. And he sat down and, and taught them. And this is what we're looking into right now, Matthew chapter 6, is uh, one of those uh, one of the things that he taught, 
And he talked about worries and cares. So let's look at Matthew chapter 6 and verse 25. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life. Everybody say, don't worry about your life. Now, let's, let's take some time and meditate on this. I want you to put yourself in the, uh, down at the bottom of that mountain, listening to Jesus. Just imagine Jesus at the top of the mountain, sitting on a rock, and you down at the bottom listening to what Jesus is teaching. And Jesus is telling you, knowing, just like, like it was then, as it is today, we have things that we're concerned about. And Jesus is telling them, don't worry about it. About what? Your life. I like what, what, where it says your life because that includes everything, right? And he gives us some examples. What you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body. Didn't Jesus nail it? I mean, he talks about stuff that we are concerned about. I mean, am I going to have enough money? You, you can throw that in to pay the bills. Am I going to have enough, enough money to eat? What, what am I going to do about groceries? Some people are concerned about that. Some people don't know if they're going to have enough with their paycheck. Yet God says, don't worry about what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Don't worry about clothes. Some folk walk into a closet full of clothes, Somebody in my own family, I'm real, real closest person to me in my life. Uh, I'm not going to mention any names. They walk in the closet. It's like, man, I need some stuff to wear. Uh, I mean, you know, she's a fitness instructor and trainer, and she's got every kind of color you can imagine, but she doesn't have enough. I, I don't have anything to wear. You go in the closet with a thousand shoes. No, it's not a thousand. I don't know. But she recently, I gave her credit. I'm not going to mention who she is, but she, but my wife, she, she cleared a closet out, <laughs> gave a bunch of stuff away. She needed to do, to do that. Praise the Lord. No, she's not caught up in, in this stuff. So don't, don't misunderstand me. I'm just joking a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> But uh, how many of you can relate? I don't have anything to wear. Come on, somebody. Go with me to Haiti, and you'll never say that again. <laughs> I, don't have, I don't have anything to wear. Come on. First world problems, they call that. Okay, so don't worry about your life. Okay, some reverb. <laughs> I was hearing some strange stuff. Um, I'm, I'm getting echo coming out, reverb. What, is that what they call it, reverb? Hey. Okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay. Uh, we got good sound crew, good media team, but that's why we need to get people involved, y'all, because people are stepping up. People are stepping up to the plate, and I'm so proud of them. Amen. Amen. I told one of our team members today, I'm pr proud of you doing a good job filling in and stuff, doing good. But, uh, man, it's, it's, it's amazing. Uh, we've got a sound person filling in today, and, and it's amazing how, how good they're doing and very little little training, man. I just, I think it's awesome, okay? So so don't think I'm not jumping on nobody. It's just, it's just uh, doing some stuff here to tweak it, right? Amen? All right. So don't worry about your life. Amen. Hallelujah. It's not life more than food and the body more than clothing. Okay, so let's, sometimes you can, you can learn something by looking at the opposite of what Jesus is saying. What if we didn't do what he was saying? Now, let's see how this strikes you. If we didn't do what Jesus said and we did the opposite, we can say, I will worry about my life, what I will eat, what I will drink, and what I will wear. Um, I tell you what, can you just turn the monitors off? Just, I mean, these, uh, if, if you can do it, fine. If not, don't sweat it. Don't worry about it. 
Don't worry about sound. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. So I will not worry, or excuse me, I will worry about my life. What I will eat, what I will drink, and what I will wear. Life is all about food and clothing, and unless I worry, nothing will happen. Now, that's what can happen if you do the opposite of what Jesus is saying. Can you listen to me? I'm going to say that again. That's, that's, that's really good. I will worry about my life. I'm not telling you to do this, but this is where, how many of you know this is where a lot of people live? I will worry about my life. I'll worry about what I eat, what I drink, what I'm going to wear. Life is all about food and clothing, paying bills, doing stuff. And if I don't worry, nothing will happen. But Jesus said, don't do that. If I, I can imagine, you ever seen that red circle with the, with the line going across it? I mean, like, stop, don't. Okay, just take that statement I said and just imagine that little red, that little red circle going around it. Amen? So don't do that. Okay? See, when, you, when you're worrying, you're saying... See, worry is a, a principle of the law. It's, 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 it's based on demand. When, you're, when, you, when you worry, when you're stressed out, you're demand-centered. What do I mean by that? Well, th these things are demanded of me. People are demanding this. My wife is demanding this. My job is demanding this. My business is demanding this. And sometimes we can be, think we're so important. You're not that important. I mean, you're important in the eyes of God. Don't, don't misunderstand me. You're valuable. We're going to get to that, how valuable you are. God looks at you as valuable. But see, don't look at yourself more highly than you ought to think. Like you got you to gotta reach in there and just take care of stuff. No, let God handle it. Now, God knows. Listen, now, now we're not talking about being irresponsible. I'm not talking about, see, the Bible says uh, to be whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. We need to be diligent on the job. We need to be diligent in business. Amen. We need to use wisdom in our finances and not spend everything we make. We need to save money. We need to do those things. We need to uh, operate in wisdom, right? not run up a whole bunch of credit card debt, right? But while we're doing these things, we don't worry. We don't have to stress while we do these things. We can trust God while we're doing these things that we, that we all need to do. The Bible wants us that we need to be diligent. This is not talking about, well, just, well we, just, we don't worry about no job, so we, just, we quit our job. No, that's not what it's talking about. Right. Amen. Well, believers ought to be the best workers on the job. Right. But while you're working, you're trusting in the Lord to take care of you. You're not trusting in yourself to take care of yourself. See, when you're worrying, you're saying, I got this. The... Um, when you're worrying, it's demand-centered. This is demanded of me. But see, when you're trusting the Lord, you're saying, when, when you cast your care on the Lord, you're saying, I got this. When you, excuse me, God's got this. God, you've got this. When you worry, I got this. When you cast your care on the Lord, Lord, you've got this. Amen. See, you, you, when, when, when you let go, you're saying, God's got this. And see, when you rely on God, when you don't worry, when you live this let go life, okay, it is, it's not demand centered, it's supply slash Jesus centered. You, you're trusting in the supply. And the supply is always there. I want you to imagine like some golden pipes. Don't think about a stiff, rigid pipe. But think about these, like imagine up above you, these soft, golden, pliable pipes that you can, can bend. And uh, each one of these pipes, like 
represents something. One of them represents your financial supply. Each one su- represents a supply. One pipe is your healing supply. One pipe is your joy supply. One pipe is your peace supply. Another pipe is for your, um, your, your marital well-being. All right? And there's, see, God's grace is always flowing. It, it, it's always flowing. So when you're, see, grace is supply-oriented. So when you let go and let God, see, you're supply-oriented. And see, that supply, imagine, see, these pipes, supply is coming from God through these pipes to you. Now, what happens when you worry, it's like you're taking your hand and you put it at the end of the pipe where, where the stuff comes out, where the prosperity comes out, where your joy comes out, and you're just grabbing that pipe and you're stopping the flow. You're grabbing it shut. That's what happens when you worry. There's nothing wrong with the supply. Amen. It's just about letting go. So, so, so don't worry about your life. Um, say, I let go. go. Say, God, God, you got this. this. See, the world says, I say that I've been saying this a lot lately. God helps those who help themselves. God didn't say that. Benjamin Franklin said that. I think that was Benjamin Franklin that said that. But God didn't say that. God helps the helpless. God helps those who can't help themselves. See, some people have this idea that, okay, God put us here on this earth now. It's just up to us now. (laughs) Okay. He'll give us a dream or a vision or whatever, and it's up to us. He's like, okay, you're on your own. I gave you a gift, and you just go and do it. Like we don't have his help along the way. No, we depend on God for everything. Will always be a child in his eyes. See, it's not, it's not like natural children when we expect them. I mean, we, we, we're not going to change their diapers at, at 17. I mean, at some point, we expect them to uh, drive themselves and do things for themselves. We don't expect them when they're 35 to call us, even though some of them do. They'll call and say, hey, you know, I need, some, I, I need to get this bill paid. Like, don't you have a job? <laughs> I mean, at some point, right, you expect them to leave father and mother, right? But see, it's not that way with God. See, some people try to equate that with us in the kingdom of God. No, God always takes care of us. Right. He always wants to care for us. And care for us throughout our whole life. Amen? Now, I love this, and, and I know my wife will appreciate this. Let's look at verse 26. Now, he's giving them an illustrative sermon here when he's talking about worries and cares. He said, look at the birds. Now, imagine again, you're there at the foot of that mountain listening to him teach. And he's saying, look at, at the birds. He's, he's showing them the birds. He says, there, there's some birds flying around there. I really believe that. I believe he's, he's not just, just saying something arbitrarily. I mean, I believe that there are birds flying around. Look at the birds. I encourage you to take some time this week and go find some birds. They're not hard to find. And just look at them. I mean, they, they just have a, a, they're just a free, flying freely, singing in the morning. I mean, we have a lake in, in our backyard, and we, I, I love hearing them. Every, every once in a while, you hear a bunch of them. Sometimes it's like it's just over, over 50 of them. I counted them one time. I think I counted 75 to 100, man, and they'll just come and just, these uh, geese, and they shh. And you can, you can hear them come down on the water. And uh, it's just a beautiful sound. You can hear them singing in the morning. Sometimes they're very loud. But they're not worried about a thing. And this is what, see, this is what Jesus is saying. He said, look at them. 
So contemplate these birds for a moment. Put yourself there where, where Jesus is teaching. Imagine you there li- listening to Jesus teach. And, and then you start looking at the birds. And then he's t- talk, telling you about them. He said, look at them. They don't sow nor reap nor gather in the barns. Yet, yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Now, we're going to go into another place in Matthew and talk some more about how God takes care of, of the birds. Okay? And, and comparing that with you and showing you that you are much more valuable than them. It's very rare that you would see a bird starving. Birds don't, don't starve. And they're not worried about food. The only time that you're going to find a bird starving is when they're caught and, and captured and put in a, in a cage. All right? And you know who does that? They're called the fowler. A fowler, and see, we need to get familiar with that because if you don't know what that means, you can kind of just kind of go through it. Um, you can go through it and, and see it in the Bible and then not even know what it means. But a fowler is a professional bird catcher. And see, what they do is they, they trap these, they, they trap birds it's in, the, in the wild and they'll, they'll catch them and sometimes put them in a cage. And if they neglect them, they can starve. But a bird on their own not going to starve. But they can if, if the fowler catches them, puts them in a cage and neglects them. I want to call your attention to, see, we have a, a fowler, and he's called the devil. And see, some of the snares, see, the devil has some snares and traps. And some of the snares that he uses to trap us is stress and worry and anxiety. Now, remember about those pipes? In, in every area that you're worried about, in that particular area, grace is not flowing into your life. For example, if you're worried about finances, imagine that financial pipe. When you're worrying about your finances, it's like you've got a grip on the end of that pipe. And, that, and, and the finances can't flow into your life. If you're worried about your marriage, see, that, that marriage flow, the flow for your marital, well, well, marital well-being will not flow into your life if you're gripping the bottom of that pipe. So when, when you're worrying, that means you're not trusting. See? The enemy is, I'm, I'm going to show you some good news about that in a minute, but, but see, the devil is the, the Bible calls him the fowler. And one of his tools is, is distress and worry and anxiety. And he uses it to trap us. And then all of a sudden, if you give in to that, you're worried about what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, how you're going to pay the bills, how you're going to pay this car note. The creditors are calling. Let it go. Say, Lord. See, when you let it go, you're saying, Lord, I can't, but you can. I don't know how you're going to do it, but I know you'll do it. Amen. I know you'll bring me out of this situation. Thank you, Jesus. That's living the let go life. Well, I don't know about that. Well, how's worry working for you? Hadn't done a thing. So just let it go. Thank you, Jesus. In every area of your life that you're worried about, in that area, that's the area where grace does not flow. The devil is the fowler. Don't let him trap you. 
The Bible says we're not ignorant of his devices. Thank you, Lord. This is one of my favorite statements in life. If you know the game, you can play it. So you need to know the, the, the games and the tricks and the strategies and the schemes of the enemy. He tries to get you worried. He tries to get you all upset and frustrated. You, you stop that flow. You're grabbing the end of that pipe. And that, see, grace is always flowing. God's unmerited favor is just free flowing. Jesus, teach us, look at the birds. Fly free, child of God, whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Look at Psalm 91. Now you're going to understand Psalm 91 a little bit better. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. See, we, we, man, we're in the secret place, man. What are we worried about? I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress Here's an important statement here. My God, verse 2, my God in, in, in him, in who? In him I will what? Trust. trust. Do you trust him? Yes. Saint, do you trust him? Yes. Look at verse 3. Surely. Everybody say surely. surely. He shall. Deli Ooh, you got your shouting clothes on? Surely he shall, not might, not maybe so, not I hope so. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. What's a fowler? Professional bird catcher. That's the, and, and what he's not, he's not talking about somebody catching birds. He's really talking about, he's talking about the devil. He shall, de, he surely, he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. You have a promise of deliverance. From the snare of the fowler. And from the perilous pestilence, he shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. <coughs> so, God, our, our Heavenly Father, promises to deliver us from the snare of the fowler. Amen. We can live our lives, even though we've got, again, we have responsibilities, we go to work. We should be diligent on the job. However, we can do it all without stress. Amen. See, Paul, Paul, Paul worked. Paul, man, Paul said, look, I, I work more diligently than them all. He said, he said yeah, but not I, not I, but the grace that was with me. See, you can tell when you're working the wrong way when you're stressed. Thank you, Lord. So, um, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody might say, well, you know, Pastor, I understand what you're saying. I, I see what you're saying, but you, you don't really understand my financial situation. man. <laughs> I'm, I'm facing some really tough times financially. I may not understand, but I know somebody who does. He understands, he has very, listen, Jesus has very intimate knowledge about what you're going through and what you're dealing with. But he tells you to release that thing. I mean, re 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 release that. Reminds me of uh, my friend Roosevelt Barnes with he tells somebody, uh, he got this statement, when he tell, want, wants somebody to shoot the ball, he said, release that thing. Yes. So you need to release that thing. Yes. Amen. I was at a wedding one time, I was performing, and uh, one of the groomsmen was a former basketball player. He's not playing any, anymore uh, competitively. Uh, so, But Roosevelt was sitting there, and as a groomsman, I'm standing up there, and people are, you know, out of weddings going to groomsmen or walking down the aisle and the bridesmaids and so forth. And he saw that former basketball player come down the aisle. And Roosevelt said, release it. <laughs> 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 he 
<laughs> you got to know Roosevelt. But anyway, uh, sometimes, you know, these, these little silly statements and things will help you remember something. Release that thing. You're going through, you're worried about your finances, release that thing. Let it go. Thank you, Jesus. See, just, 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 just release it. See? Because he's going to provide for you. you. Listen, you have a heavenly father that will provide for you. All you've got to do is let it go. Thank you, Lord. All right, well, uh, let's see. Let's go back to verse 26. And look, let's look at these birds again. Um, he said, look at, the, look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Thank you, Lord. Now watch this. Notice he didn't say, my heavenly Father. He said, your heavenly father. Now, you, can you imagine that? I mean, he's telling you, okay, look at the birds. He gave them that illustration. And they're carefree, trouble-free. Okay. And yet your heavenly father. And, and then, then, then imagine him looking at, telling them to look at the birds, and they're looking at the birds. And then he points at them, and he said, now, yet your heavenly father feeds them. He, he could have said, my heavenly father, but I believe he said this on purpose, your heavenly father. And that was significant because, see, Jesus always referred to God as his father. Now, the people that he's speaking to, the people of that day, th these Jews, they, they did not, um, knowing God as their father was a foreign concept to them. They knew God as El Shaddai and, and Elohim, but having an, th this uh, Abba, which is what, what they would have said in that day for, for father is daddy. Abba speaks of an intimate relationship. And, and that's the kind of relationship that, that Jesus had with his father, God. And he's, he's there actually introducing uh, another concept to them. He, he's introducing God to them as their father. And that was a foreign concept. And Jesus is, is showing them that, that your heavenly father, uh, God, is your, is your father. He's your papa. He's your daddy. And he wants to have an intimate relationship with you. He said, are, are you not of more value than they? Let's look at Matthew chapter 10. See, birds were, were very cheap. Two of them were sold for a penny. He said, what, what, what's the price of two sparrows? He said, see, sparrows were very plenteous in that day. They were very cheap. Okay? Um, actually, I believe there's another place that says, don't quote me, you can look up, up for yourself, but actually you get a discount for, um, for four pennies, you get five. So you get a quantity discount. But here it says, what's, what's the price of, of two sparrows? One copper coin? So, uh, so one for two. Then No, no, I, I misquote that. The, it's two, I believe you get. For uh, two pennies, you get five. Does that calculate, y'all? Okay, all right. So anyway, look it up. But here, what is the price of two sparrows? One copper coin. So, two for a penny. Very cheap. Think about this. See, there's no insignificant details in the Bible. Think about this. Not one can fall to the ground without God knowing about it. Oh, excuse me. Your father. I mean, he's God, but here he said, your father. Here again, he said, not, not my father, your father. He's introducing the father to them. See, God wants us to have an intimate relationship with him. He wants us, our default uh, mode in prayer should be not God, should be father. And it's okay to call him God. I mean, he's, he is God. And there's times I, I call him God. 
I mean, he is El Shaddai. He is all of that. I mean, he's, he's Jehovah Shalom, our peace. He's Jehovah Ra, I mean, our, our shepherd. He's Jehovah Rapha, our healer. He's Jehovah Tishkenu, our righteousness. Amen. He is Elohim. He is the creator of the heavens and the earth. But yet, he's my father. My default mode is daddy, papa, father. Father, I rest in you today. Father, I'm chilling. Thank you for a carefree life. Thank you for taking care of, care of me, Papa. Thank you for handling that situation on my job. Thank you, Lord, for ha- handling this situation in my business. Lord, I just rest. I just thank you, Lord. You're going to find when you live this let go life that some of these things that you were worried about is taken care of as you give it to him. Stop going through these mental gymnastics about how you're going to figure it out, how you're going to do it, how you're going to accomplish this, how you're going to accomplish that. And, and I don't know about these people. They're tripping. And I don't know. They just don't understand. I'm trying to explain this, this thing to them, to my, my supervisor. They don't understand. I'm just trying to let it go. These people on the job don't understand me. My kids don't understand me. My, my spouse don't understand. My, my wife says, I just cannot get them to figure it out and understand. Can they just understand what I'm talking about? Lord, just let it go. This helping somebody? Lord Jesus. Not one. Sparrows were so cheap, but not one can fa- fall to the ground without God knowing about it. Your heavenly father, man, if, 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 if he's concerned about that, then he's concerned about a parking space for you. He, he can, he's concerned about the intimate details of your life, those things that trouble you. He's concerned about that, but he wants you to release it to him. Those people that are giving you problems on the job, just release that to him. Lord, I just, I just give it all to you. I cast my care on you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Look at verse 31. And, and, and th- I'm looking, this is the New Living Translation, by the way. So, 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 don't be afraid. You, you see, there's a reason why he talked about those sparrows being so cheap. Not, man, think about that, man. I'm just thinking about that. Jesus was deep, man. I mean, Jesus was gi- giving them something that they can relate to. Amen? I mean, he, 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 Jesus, I love teaching this deep and simple at the same time. And Jesus is showing them not one of these cheap birds can fall to the ground without your daddy knowing about it. So don't be afraid. He knows every detail of your life. You are more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrows. Now, one of them could fall to the ground without your daddy knowing about it. He said, but you are more valuable than a whole flock of them. Thank you, Jesus. I want to close with this example. You, ever, you ladies ever go to the store and see a, see a dress you want, and that dress might cost, I mean, you say, oh, man, that's, that's really nice. Well, how much is it? Well, it's $1,000. Now, some everybody saying no and whatever. <laughs> okay. But why, why, why do you say that? Because in your mind... It's not worth that. I mean, you liked it. You wanted to take it home. But when you saw the price, see, you, you, you said, that's not that valuable to me. Anybody see, see some shoes you like? And they were, oh, man, these are nice. How much are they? Oh, they're uh, 230 Oh, that's okay. So the price 
you know, it, it, it determines a particular value. Let's think about our value and our worth. What price was paid for us? Romans tells us that he who did not spare his own son for us, but delivered him up for us all. How valuable are we? He said, how shall he not with him freely give us all things? Because God gave us his only son. He valued us so much. He so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He gave us everything. His only son. If, if, if I said to you, um, see, see, some people have the concept of God loves everybody, but they don't understand that God loves them. Like if, if I would say to you, um, if I, I'd say to some people, okay, do you know that God loves you? And they say, well, I know God loves everybody. No. He loves you. Can you see the difference? See, some people say, oh, I know God loves everybody, but they don't have a revelation of the Father's love for them, of their value and their worth. I mean, I love this when it, when it speaks of value. Um, Ephesians 1, 7, it tells us in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. You want to measure how much you've been forgiven? You know how you measure how much you've been forgiven? By measuring the riches of his grace. Now, if you think about it, that, that, I mean, that's pretty deep. And that's why sometimes when, when people think, oh, yeah, the cross, okay, yeah, I get it. Listen, we can contemplate this for a lifetime and still really not comprehend the full extent of what happened on that cross. See, sometimes people think when we're under grace, we're making uh, light of sin. No, we're not making light of sin. We're making much of Jesus. <laughs> we're making much of of, see, Paul said, I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. See, some people, I, know, I don't get tired of that. See, when you get a, see, you have to get grace by revelation. See, I never get tired of this. I have a lot of topics, but I only have one message. That's good. That's right. Jesus and him crucified. Yeah. It, this is not the church for you if you are tired of hearing about Jesus. Because the Bible, the gospel, is all about Jesus. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christos, Jesus. Amen. We just going to keep preaching Jesus and him crucified. Think about this. We have not going to get, we have now redemption. Through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. We, we, we are forgiven today. All of our sins, past, present, and future. See, God didn't sweep the sin, our sins under the rug. Jesus was punished for our sins on, on the cross. So we would be 100 percent righteous we have forgiveness of sin according to the riches of his grace his, the riches of his grace didn't sweep our sins under the rug another one died in our place who knew no sin Jesus was made sin for us that we would become the righteousness of God in him. He received all the bad, all the sin that he didn't deserve. 
so we could receive the righteousness that we didn't deserve. Thank you, Lord. He didn't deserve to be made sin. Likewise, we didn't deserve to be made righteous, but he took our place so we could be like him. He became like we were, that we may become like him, perfectly, totally, completely, 100% righteous. And because we're the righteousness of God, he cares for us. Thank you, Lord. There's nothing to worry about. As we come to the close of our experience, we invite you to participate in our tithes and offerings. Whatever you choose to give, we thank you in advance. And we want to say thank you also for your prayers, for your support by viewing. We're excited about what God is doing here at Summit and in your life. Thank you once again and hope to see you back here next time.